Well, it's kind of neat we get some wild turkeys in the backyard. Yeah, I don't know if you can see them. They just <laughs> crossed right behind us as we yeah. were about to turn on the camera. So. Taking a break. But. We've had the hummingbird dive bombing our heads, too. Got a hummingbird. I accidentally called 911. <laughs> Hello? Unbelievable. So, um, yeah, so Katadimus, where do we start? This, you think this looks easy. This looks not. easy, but this is our 15th <laughs> take. We started off with a turkey sneaking up behind us and then a, an accidental 911 call, but yeah. anyway. The well, it was funny, too, is when she called back and I said, <laughs> and it was no caller ID, and I said, hello? And she said, Hi. <laughs> said, so we butt dialed nine one one on our podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and this is even. You were gonna tell me the deal with the eel. Well, the deal with the eel is. It's a catadromous fish. What? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I said. But it means it, it lives. Can I call nine one one again. <laughs> it lives in fresh water, and spawns in salt water. Uh -huh. So the American eel, the, the eels that are in Lake Winnipesaukee, swim out uh -huh. to the ocean and down to the Sea of Sargasso. Which is where? It's like a two million square mile area or something. But they don't necessarily come back to where they left from. They find other, they, they may migrate somewhere else, but they migrate, they go back to fresh water. So uh -huh. it's, it's, so unlike like. So uh, they go all the way there. Yeah. And they come back. In theory. Yeah. yeah, some do. Some I mean, don't. some obviously. Yeah. but that's where they, the... any eels that we have at one point in time were from there. Wow, that's how they were. That's how they're born. So yeah. that's pretty amazing. That is Kinda amazing because like, we were talking about the hummingbirds, but but a quick list of uh, we were talking right, about. Right, and, and the hummingbirds fly to Mexico. Yeah, I know. from here, and we're in, in New Hampshire. That's amazing. Yeah, I think it amazes me. But I mean, they're tiny, this big. Yeah, the size of my thumb. A body the size of my yeah. thumb. Very determined little birds. But we're talking about the lake trout also because those are indigenous. The toad. Right. But just Togue a, is the actual name. Togue is what they actually are, yeah. Um, some people call them, well, in, like if you go to Maine, you, you'll hear the word togue more often than lake trout. But it's uh -huh. a lake trout is a togue, same fish. Okay. But they are indigenous to Lake Winnipesaukee. And on indigenous fish, other than the American eel, and they decided to call it native to Winnipesaukee because of the, the amount of time that the female spends in fresh water. Uh -huh. They've determined that it is, they're determining. This it, is kind of like for tax purposes when you have a house yes. in one state yeah. and a vacation house in another and you have to spend a certain amount of time. The American eel has to pay, yeah. pay taxes in Lake Winnipesaukee. Right. <laughs> they're not getting out of it. They spend right. too much time there. Yeah. <laughs> but then there's also the, uh, the bridal shiner is okay. a native. Native. The brook trout. Okay. The brown bullhead, or horn pout, as we call it, is a brown horn, bull, pout. horn yeah. pout. You've heard that term. I have. That's native. The uh, the burbot, or the cusk. I know that one. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, is interesting because it's actually the freshwater cusk, or burbot. Uh, we call them cusk around here, but they're burbot, lawyer fish. Uh, oh. What's the other one? Why are they called lawyer fish? Uh, no comment. <laughs> the cusk. Oh. Yep. In Europe, they call them burbot. Um, they're actually a member of the Ling Cod family, but out in the uh, Great Lakes, they call them lawyer fish. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because they're bottom feeders. <laughs> <laughs> but the freshwater cusk is is, is the loda loda. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the saltwater cusk. Freshwater versus saltwater. Yeah. Water. Now see, it's a little confusing because. What's confusing about Lake Winnipesaukee is back in, I forget when it was, but Governor John Wentworth, his uh, Jotham Ringe, one of his uh, sidekicks or whatever, I forget what he actually was. There's a Ringe, New Hampshire is a town yeah. name. Yeah. But he brought saltwater cusk, which is a different species, um, up to uh, Lake Wentworth, dumped them into Lake Wentworth. And they migrated down yeah. to Swift River and so on and so forth. So a lot of people think that... And, and Wentworth, Lake Wentworth is connected. To, it's, it's geographically pretty close to Lake Winnipesaukee. And it's connected to the Smith River. And it's connected through a river. Yeah, the Smith River. So if, in fact, those fish went down and survived, which apparently they could, um, 
in Lake Winnipesaukee, all well and good, but a lot of people think that's where the cusk came from. That's not the case because the cusk we're catching now are actually the Loda Loda, which is the freshwater cusk. Right. Versus the Brome Brome or whatever the, I'm not, I might not be saying that right. The saltwater cusk, it is a different species of cusk. Right. Um, but anyway, that's a little interesting little tidbit on the cusk. And that's one of our favorite fish to catch. Yeah, we ha you have uh, several cusk fishing videos up on the channel. Yeah. And um, yeah. you can check those out. Yeah. That's when it's very different from today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We're drilling th hopefully through three feet of ice. Yeah. But then also with the, the chain pickerel, that's indigenous. Okay. Uh, the common shiner. Also, when you say indigenous, it's sort of my first thought is like, this is where it's from yeah but that's not necessary i mean it means that they what exactly does that mean because it doesn't mean that this is the only place that they exist no. for one thing see unfortunately i like to throw that word around and sometimes inappropriately i think and i think native is probably a better word to uh -huh. use like if they're native let's just say they're native native yeah. to, to winnipesaukee i just like the word indigenous because i throw like big words around like gymnasium right you'll hear me use that yeah uh, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> <laughs> but I just I, I like the word indigenous, but it, it's probably not the right word, as you point out, to use when you're talking about fish because they're native. Native is probably a better word, right? So, for the for the for the sake of this podcast, we'll use the term native. Okay, so <laughs> white suckers are native to New uh, uh -huh. Winnipesaukee. And you know the bow fishing video we, I did? Yep. That's yep. A, that was after white suckers. That yep. was a white sucker that I w was okay. harvesting. Yeah, and that was in a that was in more of a, a river that you shot. That was uh, that wasn't a river. It was, but it was a tributary to Lake Winnipesaukee. Oh, okay. those fish came out of Lake Winnipesaukee. Gotcha. Suckers do swim upstream to spawn. Now, do you think that um, so those that white sucker is indigenous, meaning it's been here for a, yeah. a long, long time. Yeah. So you think the um, Indians who lived here, say five hundred years ago, they were eating those uh, fish. Oh, oh yeah, and actually, they were using them for fertilizer to grow their. They used they used oh. they used to harvest them by in the droves, and they'd use them for all different all sorts of different things. But they would they'd use them for fertilizer. And to this day, uh, there's probably somewhere somebody in New Hampshire still harvests suckers to, to fertilize their garden. Just They're for fertilizer, excellent yeah. fertilizer. We used to do it when we were kids. We'd go out and harvest them. And put them in the put them in the in the gardens. They're yeah. really good fertilizer. My and, dad, the way he used to fertilize our vegetable garden when I was growing up, is that we lived across the street from a a, a farm, a cow. They had cows. And he would go over with a five gallon bucket and a flat shovel, and scoop up the patties yeah. from the cows, mm -hmm. put them in the bucket, maybe put in some, or he would put in some water, and then he'd just leave it outside for like a couple days. Yeah. And uh, and then he would spread that, you know, in the in the soil. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. he called it manure tea. It works. Yeah. Um, we used to use a lot of rabbit manure. We used to use. Yeah. Uh, but but suckers, absolutely. Suckers, they're yeah. Really good for, and they're good eating too, as yeah, as we saw. Yeah. But um, uh, fall fish are another native fish, and it's interesting because that's one of the fish that get m mixed up with white fish. Uh -huh. A fall fish is not a predator fish. A white fish is a predator fish, and you can tell because a white fish has an adipose fin. What's that? It's the fin on their back between the dorsal fin and the tail, uh -huh. or the caudal fin, the okay. tail fin. And so any predator fish has an adipose fin, and it's a little fin, and I think it's from the Greek, adipose, uh -huh. but it stores fat. It's just any predator fish has that. It's that little tiny, yeah. if you look at the, the, the dorsal fin, yeah. you look at the tail fin. In between that, there's a little tiny fin that sticks off. And if you look at a fall fish or a shiner or uh, uh, what's the other, a smelt, they don't have those adipose fins. A yeah. white fish does. Yeah. And white fish, there's two types of white fish. There's a lake white fish and the round white fish. And they used to be a lot more plentiful in, in Winnipesaukee and Wentworth. And supposedly they're still there. I've never personally caught one. It, sorry, is a white fish, the white fish is different than a fall fish. Yeah, yeah it looks yeah. the same. It looks very identical, and when people catch them, because you catch fall fish that are, you know, this big, mm -hmm. and people have never caught one, it's like, oh, it's a white fish. And it's like, no, it's no, not. It's a fall fish. Because it's m yep. missing the... Missing the adipose. Right? Adipose. It's not a predator fish. As And a lot of people are convinced, and I'm one of them, that those big lake trout... Better wrap it up. 
wrap it up? I think we're running out of tape. Oh, okay. Yeah, I hear the, I hear the, the end of the tape hitting the reel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that's a little bit of... Uh, quickly, fallfish, golden shiner, lake trout, rainbow smelt, round whitefish, pumpkin seed, red breast, sunfish, slimy sculptin, and yellow perch are all native to Lake Winnipesaukee. Well, slimy sculptin is definitely my <laughs> favorite <laughs> favorite eating. But anyway, that's a little bit of trivia on. Uh, oh, and the and the the actually the American shad and salmon were actually brought in in uh, Newfound Lake in 1866 from the Saint Croix River, and then they were brought into Lake Winnipesaukee, and I think. Sunapee, uh, there was a couple other ones, in 1867. But they realized that very few rivers and streams will provide them the ability to reprodu- to, uh, to spawn and reproduce. So now that's where the hatcheries come in. You know, they'll, they'll farm the salmon and, and stock them, but they're all farm-raised. You know, landlocked salmon that we, they're the same, identically the same species. Yeah. Uh, but it's farm raised. Anything in Lake Winnipesaukee has been put in there from a stock truck. And the farms, do they have? Do, do, are they able to control the temperature of the water? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's how they spawn. So I mean, in salmon, they in theory they could reproduce. In other words, salmon should be able to go into Lake Winnipesaukee if it's in, find the right temperatures. They should be able to reproduce. And a lot of people say they can. It's just between the lack of spawning ground and uh, uh, fishing pressures. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. We're done. It just well, went off. Yeah, we got a little bit of stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Good effort, man. That's coming through in the clutch. 911 call. You got to put that on. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, I just called 911. That was so funny, dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> hello, 911. Catadromous. <laughs> Thanks for watching that video about, um, uh, Indigenous native fish in Lake Winnipesaukee. We ran out of film on my camera, so this is on my phone. Subscribe to the channel and um, please click like and watch another video. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching.